Well, good afternoon, everyone. They say you can go back home again. It's great to see people. I think I was in here a few years ago, the last time with uh, Secretary Tong, at that time Director Tong, and I think we were talking about emerging technology, so you can go back home again. Anyway, it's great to be here in front of everybody here talking about emergency technologies. I'm not going to go into AI-specific area, and they're probably asking why is a guy at a, a CIO for a public sector company that does security talking about emergency technologies. But it's important that you integrate those core competencies together and how you manage and effectuate change moving forward. So I'm going to tell you a little story about that. So what we're going to talk about today is really trends and innovation at the endpoint. A lot of people call it the edge, but when the advent of COVID and things that happened, it changed and transformed government. The time that COVID happened, I had just led um, my deputy state CIO role, and I was in San Joaquin County. As Amy talked about, it was a public health crisis at the time. Um, trying to get people shots, getting people um, vaccinated was really important, and doing more with less. But what it also did is it forced us to look beyond the endpoint of the four walls of our organization to look at the ecosystem that we now had. Um, when COVID hit back in March of 2020, we sent 8,500 people home in San Joaquin County, whether that be desktops, laptops, whatever. And the problem that we had is we only had 4,000 people that had VPN access. So we had 4,500 people touching critical systems within our own corporate competencies and organization without adequate visibility management and control. Today, that's even a bigger problem because now we work in a kind of a semi-autonomous environment. So what are we going to do to manage that? I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, the perpetual learning culture. How do we learn now? Before, we used to go to training in the early days when I was a state employee and a manager and an analyst. We'd go to an actual training at DGS down the street. That's all automated now. It's online. It's a virtual training that you get. So what is the value proposition? And how do you really manage what gets measured moving forward? Um, also, IT as a service. Now IT is big. Managed services are becoming part of our life, whether it be in the public sector or the private sector. What does that mean? What are the torrential outcomes? What are the proverbial outcomes that we need to look at and how we manage and determine those applicable outcomes? Last but not least, um, expanded trust boundaries. What do those boundaries look like for us now? How do we authenticate into those boundaries and areas of trust? Everyone's heard of zero trust, but what does that actually mean? Because it has different meanings to different people. And how do we authenticate that? How do we make sure C-level executives are up on zero trust and how they manage that? So zero trust means you trust no one. And again, what is the dialogue and key capabilities around that? So really trends, as we talked about innovation, I'll talk about innovation at the end point of the edge. What does that look like today? You know, what are we seeing in the environments that we have today? Our networks, whether it's our data centers, whether it's cloud. All of that is expanding. How do we manage? How do we correct and, and address the applicable visibilities that come in and manage those applicable changes? Again, talking about that learning culture. What does it mean for continuous learning? How are we addressing workforce issues? What does that mean moving forward? Again, IT as a service, whether that's platform, infrastructure, and software. We're moving everything off-prem today. Does data center still matter? Or is a managed service environment, a co-op managed area, a best practice and lesson learned that we need to take in government and adapt as we do in a private sector model? And last but not least, again, talking about what those boundaries look like as we move forward. So innovation beyond the endpoint, you know, McKinsey did a great survey and they talked about what the endpoint is and the new frontier for multi-cloud networks. And what does that look like? How do we secure it? How do we manage it? And how, what are the probability impacts of that, those outcomes? You know, 70% of what we're doing today in that regression, and how do we look at that? You know, 10 times faster speed, going from 4G to 5G. How does that look at in terms of storage, reliability? How do we scale today's environments and government cultures to make sure that we're doing that and delivering those key management and capable results? And then more than 50% also looking at, you know, how what the algorithms for AI. AI is a whole new frontier. With AI comes the advent of more risk. So how are we managing risk within that integrated component of AI? How are we looking at machine learning to bank on those particular competencies and level set those expectations? These are important things that will come with AI as the state of California is introduced and how we move forward. We must do more with less, but we also must collaborate as the boundaries are endless. So perpetual learning, and we're looking at key trends right now, obviously require automation and connectivity. How does that happen? Making really device security much more difficult, right? Whether it's multi-factor authentication, whether it's endpoint, whether it's two-factor authentication, 
how do we authenticate now and know what people look like? How do we look at biometrics moving forward? Is that the way of the future so we know who's doing what by when and authenticating to applicable permissions that you have? These are important concepts that I'm sure the state of California, um, Secretary Tong touched upon, will look at moving forward. Is how do you bake in AI, but what are the necessary security components and capabilities to do that and ensure it's successful? Uh, key shifts, you know, what is the change in culture and existing workforce? You know, folks like us have moved on, right? What, you know, the 50s group is actually the new 30s, believe it or not. <laughs> See, I knew I'd get a laugh out of you. So how do you do that? How do we address applicable changes in government to manufacture these areas? How do we get our younger people up and running? How do we have this blended workforce now to work? Whether it's working virtually, working at home, working in the office, working at Starbucks, McDonald's, whatever. What are we going to do to address that? And how are we gonna get those learning mechanisms in place? Because today what I found out, and I've been able to adjust in my life, is that everybody sees things through a different lens. So how do we manage that lens to ensure that we're leaving no one behind? That everybody is taking advantage of this perpetual learning culture and we're bringing everybody on this journey with you. You know, I learned a long time ago that life is really a marathon and it's not a sprint. So what are the necessary steps and comprehensive planning that leads to successful implementations moving forward? How do we change the culture, of, again, of the workforce? It's really about education, training, and awareness. Bringing them in. Mentorship programs, really important, to bring and have an onboarding process into government that really looks at what we're doing so we can get people excited, whether it be from the high schools, whether it be from the educational institutions. These are things that organizations are doing, and we must do more of that. We've got to bring people in, and we've got to integrate this approach to business, and it, and it has no boundary in terms of what we're trying to do and the outcomes of those proverbial measurements. Again, device security, ensuring that that's baked into everything that we have. That every device today has necessary connectivity, but it also has the bandwidth and security capabilities to manage change. Because all it takes, and what I've learned in working with the uh, Department of Homeland Security now, working with the Department of Defense in Washington, D.C., or uh, NATO in the Netherlands, is it just takes one unlocked door. So that education, training, and awareness is extremely important because our employees are our best assets in preventing these types of mechanisms, but allowing for innovation and transformation moving forward. So IT as a service, again, key trends that we've seen, this continues to happen. Everything is being pushed to the cloud. Everything is being managed in the cloud, whether it be infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. So how do we get our arms around that and make sure the important requirements are in place to manage and measure that appropriately? These are keys. Obviously, IP, IT is becoming more of a product modernization. So as we lose staff, we've got to do more with this public-private partnership. It has to be successful. The vendor community is very important what we've done in public sector government. I've always said that, even as a passionate public servant for 31 years, I understand and recognize the importance of that. It's a partnership. We need to continue to rely on those partnerships to drive success, and transformation, and innovation here in California. And again, understanding what we do and having a comprehensive roadmap that leads to success, whether it's the governor's new plan on AI, or there's a transformation plan, looking at state competencies and capabilities. These are all things that we need to align with and ensure that we're working to a roadmap of success and how to get there from here. Expanded trust boundaries. Again, zero trust and multi-factor solutions at the point of entry. We've got to have these necessary capabilities in place. Um, you know, I'm wondering too about privacy, introducing the privacy component. I think it's really important that we get our legal people involved in the outcomes of things that we're trying to do here as well. You know, Secretary Tong talked about the technologies and the partnerships and the C levels of the business and bringing those folks in to have that necessary partnership capability. But how do we bring our attorneys in? How do we introduce privacy into AI moving forward? Because it's a key competency that we need to count on to accentuate those types of changes moving forward. Again, what do we need to do in terms of those areas? There's an undercurrent that's happening right now, and we, we must get ahead of that undercurrent to be successful. But again, we need to do that, and it's based on proliferation of public trust and getting public to trust where our data is, how it's being managed, and making sure that it's citizen-centric oriented. And I think these are important capabilities as we go down the AI roadmap and revolutionize how California does technology and aligns with the needs of the business. These are critical competencies to ensure that those outcomes are successful. Well, that's all I had, but thank you so much. It's great to hear and be back here in California and talk about emergency. Thank you.